Welcome, baseball fans, to the ALCS. Are you ready for the League Championship Series in the National League and the American League? Well, let's get it on. The National League between Washington at St. Louis starts tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and recap our bring up the speed on the ALCS here. We've had, in unlike the National League, where I picked the uh, the the favored teams and both of them got wiped off the face of the earth. In this case, I had also picked top teams and they came through. Only I gave Minnesota too much credit going into this series here. And I gave Tampa not enough credit. This also t t gives you some insight into how the ALCS is going to play out. So in, in New York, uh, the, in the so that one finished first, so I'm going to go ahead and cover that first, okay? They, they went three games sweep. New York takes out the Minnesota Twins. I had picked five games because I kept on hearing all this story about how this is not the same Minnesota Twins that have been historically horrible in the playoffs against New York, how they've lost the last 16 playoff games, 13 of those 16 that came out the hands of the Yankees. Well, guess what? This also isn't the same New York Yankees team that took out Minnesota in the last division series. They faced each other. And as it turns out, even though these, are the, these were the two most prolific offenses of the year, hitting the most, ho most runs and most home runs of the regular season, this is playoff baseball. And in this series, you had uh, the, Minnesota, the New York Yankees just in complete control of the series from start to finish between pitching, he hitting, defense. Granted, they did show a little bit of a weakness in the fact that none of their pitchers got out of the fourth or fifth inning. At the same time, you also could chalk that up to a learning experience from... Aaron Boone, because last year he let pitchers stay in a little too long and they got slaughtered by the Boston Red Sox. And that absolutely is about to taste in your mouth. This time it was all about first line of trouble, gone. Next guy up, first line of trouble, gone. He was willing to burn through pitchers at an incredible pace. And he took a little bit of a page out of the Rays book in doing that because doing that helped the race not only win the AL wild card but also pushed the Houston Astros to the brink of elimination. We'll get into that one in, in just a few moments but it's worth bearing that the New York played its cards all the right way and handled the, t handled the game in such a dominant way. It left you a little, little short of doubt that when they went into Game 3, even though it was close, they still took care of business, they still, still took out the Minnesota Twins, and sent and went home happy. They also gave them the whole week to set up and rest players and get players back from the injured list and, and, line up, and set up their lineups, their rotation, and everything. Which brings us, I'll go into the uh, what's coming up in the uh, ALCS here as soon as I cover the... Uh, Houston and Ray series and with this series it showed that they t they showed complete dominance here they really did which I find kind of interesting because now they're not favored at, as in the ALCS let's go ahead and get into the Houston Rays game here so we can tie all this back around here right in Houston I had given the Rays not enough credit Yes, Houston was dominant at home. They took a 2 nothing lead. I thought, okay, game three, they're going to just end this thing. Go into Tampa Bay because Tampa Bay is a better road team than they are a home team. I thought, they're going back to Tropicana Field. They're going to close this thing out. No big deal. And same night as, as New York and Minnesota, only not so much. They turned on the gears. They got creative, and they pushed the game all the way back to game five. Series tied 2-2. Two -two. They're, they're both now in the brick of elimination. And who do they go to? Garrett Cole. Both Granke in Game 3 and Verlander in Game 4 were largely ineffective for Houston. And that shocked Astros fans. They can go into, I, mean, I can go into the history about uh, Granke in big games. I can go into the fact that Verlander never started a short rest. 
but fundamentally, despite their starters struggling, their offense was shut down, which doesn't help, and they had a very, very deep, potent lineup. I could go into all the names, but fundamentally, they're as deep as anybody else. I mean, you, you talk about the Yankees roster, the Twins roster, the Dodgers roster, Tampa's roster. They have people, one through nine, who can hit, and they didn't hit. The, the, the Rays pitching, whether it was your starter, your opener, your bullpen, shut down the Astros lineup and forced a Game 5. Now, that brings us to Game 5. What an unprecedented game. You had Glasnow starting as an opener for the, uh, for the Tampa Bay Rays. And he had been absolutely phenomenal during the course of the season and even getting them to, into this point. And then, what do you see? You see every single, the first four, five, six hitters all getting hits. Rings up a 4 nothing score. And you'll notice during the course of those first four batters, you saw batters who were in a position and historically known for first pitch swings or being aggressive, laying off pitches like they know what's coming. I thought that was very suspicious. I also thought they were suspicious that they seemed to know exactly what's coming and was able to put the ball in play and in just the right place. It, was, it looked as though they had... Um, that maybe Glasnow was pissing, tipping his pitches. You definitely saw conversations in the dugout, conversations after runs scored, conversations as the rota as the batters were chanting up here. That they seemed to know what was coming and was taking advantage of it. Whether or not that's true or not remains to be seen. But speculation is all over baseball that Glasnow was tipping his pitches. Okay, he was tipping his pitches. You're down four nothing after the first inning. Guess what? The the um out until the end of the towards the end of the base end of the, end of the game where you have a couple of home runs going on there with Bregman and, and um I think maybe it was Altuve. I can go back to look at my notes. I think it was Altuve and Bregman. Until that happened, put it up six one. You still had second inning through ninth inning. What did the Rays offense do against Scour Cole? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, you got the one run. Yes, I'll give you credit for that. But when you've got four runs first inning and you got two home runs later in, later in the uh, in the game and you put up one run against Cole, it it doesn't matter how much how badly Glasnow is doing. It doesn't matter how many runs he was putting up. You still even if you had zero that first, you still had the off two of You still had the Bengal home runs. You still, you still would have had a 2-1 ball game in Houston's favor. It ultimately didn't make much of a difference whether he was tipping his pitches or not. It just made everything very suspicious and created a lot of storylines. Having said that, Garrett Cole does a phenomenal job. Their acquisition for Pittsburgh pays off in big time, especially after they let McCullers go and they, tr and they let, and let Morton go. He comes in and, and salvages day and becomes Houston's hero in Game 5 and sends them to the ALCS tomorrow, 8 p.m. against the New York Yankees. Now, bringing this around full circle with Minnesota out of the picture and the Rays gone home, now you've got what everyone was kind of hoping for because you've got the two powerhouses of the American League, two 100-plus game winners. And this is kind of, a lot of people thought this was a foregone conclusion. It was kind of inevitable. Um, I picked them to, as well myself. Even though uh, I thought the Minnesota was going to put up more of a fight and Tampa Bay wasn't as going to be as good, I still had the same two teams in the ALCS. Finally, because they're so deep and they're so good and they have so few weaknesses. Now, we've already had uh, Aaron Boone rele and uh, AJ Hinch release. There are pictures for the series here. So you're going to have, in Houston, you're going to have Tanaka Game 1 against Zach Greinke. And considering the fact that Verlander went on short rest in Game 4 and Cole just won pitch Game 5, you knew neither one were going to pitch Game 1. At the same time, you knew Greinke was available on regular rest. And given the fact that Houston and New York have both feasted on home field advantage, you knew if you're going to have to pitch Greinke, Somewhere, the best bet was let's go ahead and get him the home field game, have the protection of Minute Maid Park going on there, and see what can happen. 
New York decides, okay, Tanaka has been one of their best postseason pitchers in the, during his tenure with the Yankees. Last year was definitely an outspoken game considering he won the only game against the Red Sox, kicking game two in the ALDS against Boston in Fenway, by the way. So, let's go ahead and since he, he, since he shows he can do this on the road in the postseason, and you're now you're going to be in enemy territory. Let's go ahead and throw Tanaka against Granky. Granky is in a big game scenario, game one of the ALCS, but he's got the comfort of playing at home. He's got the comfort of playing in front of a, of, a, of a friendly crowd. We'll see how well that helps them out. Ultimately, I see that because both New York and Astros are home field from uh, unfamiliable foes, they are juggernauts in their home field and not so much on the road. Uh, Houston or showed that against Tampa Bay, uh, although New York did take care of business in Minnesota. I have kind of pegged uh, that originally I picked Houston in seven, and the thing is, now that Houston is, is, is somehow favored, I'm, I feel inclined to say, hey, to give maybe New York as the underdog favored to this. However, Bear in mind, I changed my perspective on the National League because I got busted in both the division series. In this series, you've got the home field advantage for Houston, but you've got well-rested pitchers for New York. Um, therefore, I kind of think that given the matchups here, you're going to have uh, Verlander ver versus Paxton in Game 2. Then you're going to shift to New York, and you're going to have Cole against... Um, Severino, given the fact that I, I favor Tanaka over Granke in Game 1, I definitely favor Verlander over Paxton in Game 2, and I favor Cole over Severino in Game 3, anything can happen. I'm going to go ahead and stay with my picks. Because of the home field advantage, Four, it's going to be a 4-3 to three game. I just don't know if it's going to be all home games like it was in Tampa series and all home games like it was in the 17 series. At the same time, the Yankees are hungry. They got taken out in 07, uh, or by, in 17 by the Astros in, in Game 7, coming back to Houston, up 3 games to 2. This is going to be a, a, a battle of Titans and a, and a pure gold series. I'm looking forward to it very, very much. Um, so for Game 1, 8 p.m., Eastern Time, yeah, on Saturday, Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, um, on Sunday, in Houston. Then it shifts over on Tuesday to the Bronx. Looking forward to a great showdown between two Titans, two powerhouses, two elite teams, both with great pitching, both with great depth, both with great bullpens, defensively, offensively, everything you could ask for for a true championship series. Um, it definitely gets on paper favoritism for the AL for the AL over the NL in the World Series, but at this point in time, uh, the National League has already shown it doesn't matter where you rank, they're ready to play. In the American League, I don't know if it's going to be a, 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 a home sweet home for all seven games, but it's definitely going to be very exciting. I'm going to go ahead and stay with my original picks because even though it took a different number of games than I predicted, it was the same victors. Therefore, on the basis of home field advantage, I'm going to give us to Houston. But you know what? If the Yankees do actually manage to come back and, and upset the Astros, then it'll be a wonderful game to cover and bring you all the uh, stats, history, storylines, everything. So please let me know what you think about what I think in the comment section below. If you just happen to come across this video and you're surfing through YouTube, please hit like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel. I'd love to be able to provide all this content to you, and I want to continue doing so for as long as possible. Thank you all very much for watching and for all your support to this channel. Have a great evening. Enjoy Game 1 of the NLC NLCS tonight and Game 1 of the, a the ALCS tomorrow night. Have a great night. Enjoy the games. Thank you for watching.